Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and we are hours away from servers going down and then Witch Queen launching tomorrow. So, first thing, servers are going down 6.45 p.m. Pacific Time, February 21st. That is Monday night. If you need anything done, do not wait till the last minute. Do it as soon as you get home, do the last minute checklists, and then log out because you won't be able to. Servers come back up 9 a.m. Pacific, Tuesday morning, and that's when Witch Queen will launch. In that time, you need to make sure you have all of it, everything downloaded, your console ready, fully installed, good to go. Now, things that I want to cover in this video. One, what you should be doing before servers go down. And then two, what you should be doing on day one when you log in and kind of the proper order of operations for the initial things to make sure you don't mess anything crucial up. So let's start with the pre-server shutdown. And then the second half of the video is going to be day one login checklist. So the first thing that you want to do is on your character, like I've got mine right now, is make sure you have a variety of weapons, but also some space because you're going to be picking up a bunch of cool new stuff. You're also going to have the issue of servers, like when expansions launch, things like Destiny Item Manager, Ishtar Collective, any inventory management software, third party app potentially is not going to work for a little while. Could be hours, could be half the day, not entirely sure. So the goal is that anything you think you may want to use, don't have it on a secondary character or a third character. Put it in your vault, so at least at a minimum you can go to the tower and pick it up. But probably what you really want to do is make sure as well that your primary character, like I'm going to start on my Titan here, that you have a good mix of things that you can literally just start playing Witch Queen already on your character and you don't have to worry about it. So for me, like heavies, I've got Legendary Rocket Launcher, I've got Galley couple linear fusion rifles because those still hit decently well. I've got a pretty good sword and I've got a decent machine gun. Bring whatever you want that you're comfortable in heavies. Just I would bring a decent little mix. When it comes to energies and kinetics that we've got up here, thing to know about the champion weapons for Witch Queen in Season 16. We know barrier champions, it's going to take scout rifles or bows. When it comes to overload champions, it's going to be SMGs or auto rifles. I'm going auto rifles just because they give you a little bit more range, but you might plop an SMG in there if you want. My advice, if you have Arbalist, bring it with you. It's really good for breaking literally any type of shield, and it's also a barrier weapon, so it serves two purposes. So it's pretty nice to actually have there. Also hits pretty hard at range. Uh, but also in my kinetic slot, I've got a bow, I've got a scout, uh, aggro scepter, because you know exotics that use primary weapon or primary ammo or trace rifles are getting that 40% buff. And then on top of that, pulses get 10% more. So exotic pulses that use primary ammo get a 50% buff. So I've got a couple exotic pulses that I'm bringing in. I've got Graviton Lance, which I could have fun with. Bad Juju, really good for super ammo. Kind of an infinite clip situation. Uh, as I said, a scout rifle. And then I've got a decent auto rifle up here on the top slot. Not really bringing an SMG. Probably can manage without it for a little while. Energy slot, same thing. A couple different bows that I enjoy using. You know, solar, I don't have a ton of options in the solar. So I've got that covered here. Uh, I've got a Void Bow, I've got my Auto Rifle, Salvager Salvo, it's amazing for ad clear, bringing it with me. Also got an alternative of a Scout Rifle here in case I need one of those. So again, have a Barrier Weapon, have an Overload Weapon, have a Barrier Weapon, have an Overload Weapon in both of these slots, so you can mix and match as needed. They've said Unstoppable is for sure going to be the Glaive, and we don't know what else. It could be Pulse. It could be, who knows, it could be sidearms, it could be hand cannons. So I might need to throw a hand cannon on one of these two spots as well, just to give me some alternatives. But again, give yourself a variety of options because you want some space because you're going to be picking stuff up as you go. But make sure your character is loaded out. Also, check your armor. Make sure you got some decent mods like, you know, protective light's probably a good thing to throw on there. Make sure you, you know, particle deconstruction's going away so you can clear that out. If you got anything that you're walking in with, make sure you got a couple reserves, maybe some damage resistance, some basic stuff so you don't have to like mess with this too early on. Just have your character ready to go with your, when you log in to have a variety of options for weapons. Um, decent space on your character. Like, I could probably even move some of this stuff off the character so I've got more room to pick up armor. And just make sure your character is ready to go. That's probably one of the most important things because Destiny Item Manager, which I live off of, is going to be down for however many hours the API is down, and we just don't know when that's going to come back. So give yourself options and make sure your secondary and third character are not holding any really crucial weapons. Put those in the vault so they're at least they're easy to access on that character so you don't have to log out or log in or anything. If you have not turned in all of your gunsmith materials, seriously, turn them in. If you get anything good, cool. If you don't, turn them into shards and just break them all down. Also, make sure you are stocked up on upgrade modules. Enhancement prisms if you can afford them. Ascendant shards if you have the ability to acquire any of these. But upgrade modules, 
My recommendation as you level up through the campaign, you're going to get a whole bunch of new stuff. Use it, see if anything is cool, you never know what you're going to find. But there may be like one or two weapons that you want to upgrade, you know, say like Arbalist. I want to be able to use that and bring it with me through like future missions. That one I might upgrade a couple of times. Other things that may not be quite as crucial, I may switch auto rifles or I may grab a different bow or a scout rifle if I'm just messing around with a lot of the new drops. But again, if you can stock up on upgrade modules now, do it. So then you're good to go if you're trying to toy around. Just don't upgrade everything. I give my co-host Cognito a hard time. He wants to upgrade like every two levels. Your leveling is gonna go up so fast. Don't upgrade anything for a little while unless you feel like it's required for the legendary campaign, which I'll cover later. But again, stock up on any materials that you need. Also stock up on Glimmer. Literally go to Spider, whatever currency he's selling Glimmer for, get your Glimmer up to 250K so you are maxed out. You don't need to like, need to go stock up on Glimmer anywhere when you log into Witch Queen. That would be a really weird time sink. So remember, Spider's current currency exchange stuff is gonna go to Master Rahul, and Master Rahul is also gonna have this type of currency exchange as well. Banshee and Ada One are just gonna have four mods down here. All of the currency exchange and then all of the material exchange that Spider had, all of that is gonna come over here to Master Rahul. So if you're looking for that stuff, when you log in on Witch Queen, all of it's gonna be here, probably on a different page or something. And I know there are a lot of memes going around about Vault Space, but it is actually a thing. Mine's only at like literally 4.56, and I'm going to work on one more time passing through to try and clear some stuff up. I've gotten it whittled down to not quite as many options of most things. But again, I've got some armor just for a variety of stats saved. I've only got one of each exotic, maybe two in case it's like a high roll. But the idea is like if you have something like, you know, if you have two copies, but you can break down a piece of armor for prisms later on, save that one if you don't aren't dire for the space. Like this one I'm mostly saving because it's a 62. It's fine, but I could break this thing down for seven prisms later if I want them anyway. So make a little space in the vault because when the API comes back up and things like Destiny Item Manager work, having space in your vault to kind of move stuff back and forth in a quick fashion will be beneficial. You don't want to sit there and clean your vault at the start of Witch Queen. I promise you. That's something I've done. It's really frustrating. Give yourself a little working space. You're going to be getting a lot of new stuff, and there's some stuff you're going to want to basically probably tuck into the vault until we get deeper into weapon crafting. I'll get to that later. So make some space. I promise you, you will thank me. Do it. And again, we're getting enhanced perks on weapon crafting. We're getting origin traits on all the new weapons. A lot of the things that might be decent in here probably just got outdated as soon as I log into Witch Queen. So be aggressive on some of the cleaning. Don't get rid of a god roll, but if it's kind of meh, it's probably going to be not used going forward. So now we're in the second part of the video. If you feel like you're good for pre-server shutdown, then now we're going to go over the day one checklist of the things that you should think about when with regards to the day one pieces. And when you log in, I don't know if we're going to go straight into the first mission. Like there might be a cinematic when we log in. I imagine there will be explaining what's kind of going on with Witch Queen. And then we may go straight into the first mission. Basically, as you, soon as you can stand still for a second, I have a very important piece of advice. And that piece of advice is to make sure your ghost shell has the highest experience bonus possible equipped. Now, the reason I say that is because right now we have the option to equip this. It's for 12%, but this mod is fragile and will expire at the end of season 15. So I'm not gonna equip that right now. My advice is to equip this before you log out and if you haven't made it to this part of the video, then, you know, do this as soon as you log in. We may get a new one of these right here for 12% when we start Witch Queen. I don't know yet because they say this mod's going away. So maybe 10% is going to be the max. But if there's something higher than 10%, my advice is to equip it straight away. Missing out on 2% experience for like all of the campaign, you might, you know, kick yourself in the teeth for that one. So make sure before you literally shoot any enemy, before you do anything else, take a second, breathe, check the highest ghost mod that you can equip for experience and equip it. If there's a new one for year or, you know, for year five, that's 12%, come in here, equip this thing, and then move on with whatever you got to do. If this doesn't exist, then just make sure you have the 10% on for sure. So that is step one. Step two, as I said, is we're likely going to be pointed very directly into the start of the Witch Queen campaign. Now, the first two missions are free to everybody. Uh, my assumption is that ties into weapon crafting, which is supposed to be available for everyone, just probably not to the full extent, depending on if you have the season or not. But everybody's going to have access to weapon crafting, so the first two missions are going to be an important piece. But the biggest important piece that you get out of those first missions, wherever the throne world is going to end up on the directory, 
is the fact that at some point in that first mission or so, whether it's part of Season of the Risen or it's part of the Witch Queen actual expansion, but those are probably going to be pretty tied together, it's going to be the fact that you need to get your artifact. And before you do any bounty turning in, before you do literally anything else, make sure you do the mission that gets you your artifact. Because if you start turning in bounties before you have this, you really are going to defeat the whole purpose. And you want to make sure, you know, come in here, check out the mods that we're going to have. We'll see what's unstoppable. We'll see what the fun mods are. We'll check that one out on stream. And then, of course, you'll start working towards your power bonus as well. Should be fun to see what they do with the new artifact. I'll be curious. But remember, this new artifact, you can eventually unlock them all. So hopefully resetting is less of an issue. Now, the other piece is before you turn in bounties, be careful what you turn in and what you go through and do. I am saved up to like 60 of the area of 63. When you log into new expansions and also new seasons, usually there's a seasonal quest. There might be two or three actual quests that I need to pick up. So I may need to clear a couple of these bounties out. I might need to turn in like three of them. If you're going to turn in any bounties, turn in the most basic ones. Zer is usually going to be okay. If you got any Nessus, if you got any EDZ, anything that's not really tied to something that has like a weekly challenge to it is going to be what you're looking for. If I need to turn in Cosmodrome bounties, that's probably going to be okay. But make sure they're daily bounties that say XP+. Plus. Don't turn in a weekly bounty that's going to be worth more towards your artifact. Only turn in dailies if you need to make space. I'll probably have to do it to a couple of these, but, you know, even if I turn these in the first thing I do, it's still going to go into the new season. And before you turn in more than just those couple bounties for quests, the other piece of advice is to make sure you unlock the XP boosts. Now, the XP boost goes fairly quick on the season pass. And the main reason this is important is first, if you have the season pass, make sure you pick up like the welcome package if you own the season pass. If you don't, well, that's your choice. But also the other thing you might want to see if you can get is the small fire team boost up here at like level five. If you go through a couple campaign missions and then this thing unlocks sitting right here, this is going to give you and increase fire team members XP gains by 2%. And this is 2% right here. So in theory, before you start turning in bounties, if you can get this one unlocked, it's a bonus. But you'll notice the large XP boost at the top of this list. The large XP boost comes from right here. So that is an important thing. That's why you get 32% more bonus experience if you have the season pass. If you don't, again, that's one of those reasons the free path is the free path. But this will give you the big boost. This is like 20% at the, at, at the outright. And then if you can get the one for a small fire team, what you want to do is try and find... Anybody that you can join, whether it's somebody randomly in the tower that you can join up with, you're just like, join fire team, maybe they're locked up. Find a random person, try and join a fire team. If you don't have anybody, again, the tower is probably a reasonable place to do that. It should work. See, I could join this guy's fire team, sit in the tower, and then if I join his fire team, then I can turn in the bounties that I want to, and I'm going to get that XP bonus. So it's important to do that. Now, the other piece you're going to want to do is save some of the bounties for a little bit later. Once you have your artifact, you can turn in a lot of your bounties. The only ones that you're going to want to save are the ones that are progression toward weekly challenges like we have now. Crucible, for example, is one. Vanguard bounties is another. I could turn in Cosmodrome, Europa, Lectern, all of this stuff basically except Crucible. I can turn all of those in. And the main reason is, is those are just going to go towards experience. That's the whole reason we saved them. If you have um, if you have bounties saved up for Vanguard, Crucible, Vanguard, Crucible, Gunsmith, and also Gambit, if you have any bounties saved for these, once you hit the soft cap of 1,500, then these challenges appear, and then you can turn in those bounties, try and again do it with a fire team, try and join somebody in the tower, whatever, and then you can actually make progress towards these, you know, weekly challenges when you turn in those bounties. If you turn them in before this challenge actually shows up, you're not going to get the progress you're going for. And you're just going to get the experience without the progression towards the weekly challenge. So most bounties are okay to turn in once you have your artifact and then try and join a fire team. Get as high as you can on the season pass, maybe by a plan. Maybe just do a couple missions. If you got space and you don't need space, play a couple of missions. See how quick you make it through here. And if you get like maybe this one or this one and then you start turning in bounties, it's just a little bit more. But make sure you pick up that welcome package. That is a huge experience bonus. So that is the piece on bounties that I wanted to cover in the order. Get your artifact first. Turn in most of them. 
uh, when you have like the season pass where you're comfortable with it and in a fire team if possible. Then once you hit the soft cap of 1500 as you're leveling up and doing things or the legendary campaign, then you can do the Crucible, then you can do the Gunsmith, the Gambit ones, and Vanguard. And those can make your progress towards weekly challenges. That's an important piece. So that's your order for bounties. I've said it a couple times, but I've had a lot of questions, so I just wanted to try and be as clear as possible. Now, I've said this in a previous video, but in case you haven't seen it, and if you haven't seen my leveling guide and you're kind of clueless of half the stuff I'm talking about, click up on screen. It's my leveling guide, and then that one will take you to part two in case you need that as well. So look at that video guide if you need to understand power cap, pinnacle cap, anything of that nature. If that terminology doesn't make sense, check out that video. It kind of explains it all, tells you the order of things to do. But the biggest thing that Bungie did for Witch Queen is they added a legendary version of the campaign. It is on contest mode, so you can't over-level it, but it is going to be a challenge. So whether you do it solo, which I'm going to be work on putting out guides for, so if you haven't subscribed to the channel, which I know a lot of you haven't, hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell, you guys will know when I post new videos with guides about weapon crafting, guides about soloing these missions. Because I know not everybody's going to have a fire team. I want to make sure everybody can solo these missions, so I'm going to see what it takes to do it. So that's the main important thing about the legendary campaign is before you do anything else, like if you go through the campaign for the story, you're going to want to go back and play it on legendary because you're going to get a boost. You're going to get eight pieces of gear. And the reason I say eight is because you get eight upgrade modules when you do it as well. When you beat every mission on legendary, you're going to get a set of blue gear, which is basically infusion fodder to put into whatever you want to upgrade. And then you're going to be all of those pieces are going to drop at 1520. So you're going to get a huge jump from the soft cap of 1500 to 1520 by doing that legendary campaign. Once you've done the legendary campaign, then you can come out to your directory and handle all of your weekly challenges, your crucible, your vanguard, your pinnacle. If you want to go into survival for that glory grind, also a piece of advice, check the power leveling video. Same thing as well. Make sure you do the legendary campaign before you start doing any of these type of weekly challenges because getting plus 20 is going to help make these drops be 20 higher than they would have been. So that's another piece of advice. So that's most of everything that I can cover. You're going to want to check your ghost when you log in. Make sure you do whatever first mission or two it takes to get the artifact. Should give you some progress on the season. Save your bounties until you have the artifact. Once you have the artifact and you feel like your season pass is where you're comfortable with it from playing or, you know, dropping a few bounties, see if you can get anybody in your fire team. It even works in the tower. Dump most of your bounties except the ones related to weekly challenges. Then keep progressing through the campaign. Try and do it on legendary if you can. And then once you get to this point, then we're going to get kind of be back to the powerfuls and pinnacles. Now, we also know which queen is going to have you know, your weekly activities. We're going to have a new six person activity. We're going to have season of the Riven that has its or season of the risen. I'm sorry, totally wrong word there. Season of the risen. That's going to have a new activity. That's going to have its own progression to it as well. So there's going to be a decent amount of stuff to do, but the legendary campaign priority number one before any of that other stuff, because that jump in gear score to 1520 is massive. So don't miss that one. And there is one more thing I want to cover before we go. And this is it. Now, this isn't too much of a spoiler because it's just a brand new weapon, but the whole point here is when you're going through the campaign, when you're playing in a Witch Queen, there are going to be weapons that drop that have a red border. Up here in the corner, you guys can see my mouse or I've got a big arrow on screen. It has a red border because it's very, very important. These are going to be what you use to unlock perks for weapon crafting. So any weapon that you see that drops that has a red border, you may not love the perk combination. You may not even love the weapon itself. It may not even be your, you know, typical style. Maybe like auto rifles over SMGs. Keep it. Anything with a red border is going to help you unlock perks with regards to weapon crafting. And I don't know how frequent those are going to drop. I don't know how hard they are going to, to going to be to come by. And then the randomness of whatever perks are on that weapon. You may need to hope for RNG later on. So anything with a red outline, save it. As you can see on screen, you're going to be able to go through the deep sight resonance process, attune it, and then potentially pull the perks out of this into the weapon crafting table. We don't know the exact process, so stay tuned. I'm going to put a weapon crafting guide out as soon as I kind of have all the information we need. So hit that subscribe button. As I said, lots of guides are coming your way. But again, this type of weapon is 
Potentially going to be rare, I don't know, but these are the only types of weapons that are going to get you the perks for weapon crafting, so save them all. That way you can work towards all the different perks that you're going to want to unlock. The more of these that you have stockpiled in the vault, when you get ready to dive into really working on weapon crafting, you can go look through and see and then maybe prioritize. I want these perks first and maybe I can unlock these later, but if you have, if you have none of these weapons, then you just have to play and hope they drop. So anything with a red outline, save it. It will be crucial for weapon crafting. And then as soon as we know a little bit more, I will explain it in a full guide. But don't delete these weapons. They are going to be very important. But that pretty much covers it. So hopefully this lets you know last final checklist of things to do before server shutdown. Try and do what you can. Make sure your character is ready to log in and start fighting. And then that day one checklist, do things in the right order. That way you can get the most experience possible. You don't miss out on helping to level up that artifact. And then also those red weapons for weapon crafting. Not entirely sure the specifics, but we know those are important for weapon crafting. So save them all. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like below. I will be streaming as long as I am possibly going to be awake for Witch Queen over on my Twitch channel. So twitch.tv slash Ubuntus. I will be live when servers go live and then hopefully we can log in. We'll just have to see what the queue numbers are like. But I'm going to stream as long as I'm able to stay awake. We'll see how many hours that is. Maybe it's a new record for me. We will see. But we'll be covering as much as we can over there. So join me over there if you want to find me on Twitter for pictures, news, updates, important tidbits, follow me there. If you guys are new to the YouTube channel and you enjoyed the video and want to hear more from me, um, you know, hit that subscribe and alert bell. You guys will see a lot of guides coming from me, especially at the next few days, but continuing through Witch Queen and Season of the Risen and going forward. So thank you all for the support lately. Y'all have been awesome. For all of my Patreons, thank you very much. You guys are rock stars. For all of my channel members, you guys are rock stars as well. All of you guys are amazing. Thank you so much, and I will see you in Witch Queen. Good luck.